All right, so the next step here is uh, removal of this water pump. Uh, the weather is starting to get cold here, so I just want to make sure that I wrap this up as soon as possible. So before we remove the water pump, we need to get these uh, belts off. First the uh, AC belt and then your serpentine belt. It's very important to remember you know, how these belts are routed so you can you know, reinstall them later without problems. I actually just uh, snapped a picture of that. But I guess you can also find some uh, diagrams online. All right, the first thing you need to do is remove this uh, AC belt. And this right here is a tensioner. And as you can see, uh, the actual uh, bolt that I need to move is located here under this plastic cap. So let me just pop that off real quick. All right, pop right off. Now the next step is to insert like a hex key in there. We actually have uh, hex bits, so let me grab one of those real quick. I believe it's uh, it's an eight millimeter. All right, so here I am, and here's this. Uh, 8 millimeter hex bit and you know people say that, that you need like breaker bars to get this uh, tension of this belt and I say that it's nonsense there isn't that much tension on these belts and I bet that I'll be able to get it removed with this let's see if I'm right and we're gonna turn clockwise here it's fully inserted Push down, yeah, see, tension is off. The belt is removed. Inspect it for cracks. Actually, it looks like this belt may have been replaced not too long ago because it it looks it looks almost new so we're gonna keep this okay so our next task is to remove the serpentine belt and in order for us to do that we'll have to move this tensioner here okay now follow me to the other side uh, here so our next step now is to remove the serpentine belt right here and uh, that's that's a pretty easy task you do it the same way as you remove uh, you know the AC belt and again this is done with this eight millimeter hex bit which you already knew <laughs> So boom. Slide that off. Perfect. set okay time to remove the water pump and we're just gonna use a 10 millimeter socket here
pull these off. You know, people say that it's a good idea to replace these as well uh, when you're overhauling your uh, cooling system. I didn't see the need for that. I mean, it just, this thing, you know, it's a composite piece, but I don't know. It looks pretty good. I'll think about it. Here's our actual water pump. Alright, what I'm actually doing here is putting in these uh, bolts that I just removed from uh, from the pulley to see if I can use them to uh, push this water pump out. I think they might be a little too short for this job. No, actually they're fine. Yeah, it's just a little trick in case you didn't know, you know, if you're, you know, these water pumps can be a little stubborn, like you can't just pull them off. So you can just uh, use the bolts you just removed from the, from the pulley. You know, there are holes, especially, you know, threaded and designed for this. Alright, and it's out. Okay, this unit looks like it has a metal impeller. From BMW. It actually looks pretty good. Not seeing any evidence of uh, of leakage, but of, yeah, of course we're gonna replace it at this point. All right, one quick thing I want to show you is this uh, aluminum thermostat housing. As you can see, uh, the way this uh, this piece was made, there are some metal shavings here, and uh, you know the mating surface is actually nice, but these little things, these little shavings, I don't like. So before I even uh, fit everything together, I'm just gonna grab, uh, well, I'm gonna start with uh, some sandpaper, you know, see if that does the trick, and I'm gonna try to file all of this down. And if that doesn't work, I'll just grab a file and use a file for that. Okay, now I'm gonna install my uh, thermostat. And the way it goes in is just the way, the same way as you removed it. So this part here with the spring that goes in first, and uh, you're gonna see a little see that arrow here. There's an arrow here, so that should be pointing up. So I'm gonna fit it in like so. Now the housing is gonna come in.
Okay, now we're gonna put in the water pump. I have uh, this graph unit here that I'm gonna use. All right, so moving right along here. So all these nuts and bolts have been torqued down. Now I'm ready to install this uh, pulley here. Here it is. And I'm actually gonna reuse this old pulley. I don't see anything wrong with it. Uh, so I, I don't see why I can't uh, reuse it. First step is to replace this uh, serpentine belt. And I have a picture on my phone up, just for reference. So I just need to get her over this alternator pulley. Let's see if I have the proper socket handy. So this is all lined up here. So I'm going to use the 8mm hex bit.
would be a lot easier with another set of hands. Be so much easier with another set of hands. All right, I'm back, and with magic of editing, this uh, serpentine belt is on. Now I just need to install this uh, little accessory belt, or. AC belt rather. And the way it fits is like so. Here, here, this bit goes over the tensioner. So all I have to do is grab my hex bit push this guy down Tell you what, it was easier to take it off than to put it back on. Never mind, it's not so bad. All right, and my belts are on. All right, so now that I have the thermostat, the housing, and the water pump in, it's time to put in my radiator. And one thing I wanted to point out is that uh, in order to install that, it, the radiator, it's better to have uh, the lower hose already connected because, I mean, it is possible to get to it from the bottom, but it's, uh, it's very, very difficult. So it's easier to just insert it with, uh, uh, with the hose already installed. Just make sure that you you know take real care when you're installing this. Uh, don't try not to bend any fins on the radiator.
it's a tight squeeze with that lower hose, but trust me, it's well, well worth it to do it like this. Okay, line up the clips. Right, connect it, and notice there's no uh, no movement back and forth or left to right. You know, you, you want the radiator to be pretty firmly in place here. You know, and this is obviously a pressurized system, so uh, you want these clamps to be pretty tight. Not too tight, like you don't want the end of the hose to start flaring, but uh, you want the connection to be pretty good here. Last thing you want is to be driving on a highway and having the, the, one of these hoses blow off. All right, now I'm gonna climb underneath and get that lower clamp. Okay, so one thing I wanted to mention is that lower red hose was a bit of a pain to, uh, you know, to tighten that hose clamp. It's no big deal, but you gotta get it from underneath, obviously. Uh, it was a lot easier to use this guy. It's a six millimeter socket with a uh, long extension. So let's connect uh, the top holes. Okay, so the upper radiator hose is installed, the clamps are tightened, and uh, that's it. Now it's time to connect uh, this hose right here, and that's going to be the last piece of the puzzle for our cooling system. And the next step after that is going to be to flush the system again. Um, I'm going to just flush it with uh, distilled water, and then I'm going to fill it with uh, 50-50 mix of BMW coolant and, once again, distilled water.
Okay, part of my LCD. This is completely unnecessary, but I like when things are clean. Okay, and everything is assembled. Okay, so there's another slight issue that I forgot to uh, point out to you guys. So, if you're like me and you're planning to delete the engine fan, you're gonna need to get a lower temperature uh, switch. Uh, so what it does, it basically turns on the auxiliary fan which is right here at a lower or rather at a higher at a lower temperature to compensate uh, for lack of engine fan so here I'll show you this is uh, this is the new sensor this is the old one on the surface they look pretty much identical but you're gonna run into problem with this uh, little plastic tab inside I mean you're not gonna see that so in order for a new sensor to to uh, fit correctly you need to modify the connector here here let me try to zoom in Okay, so here you can see this little tab here and what you need to do is you need to shave it off and the way I'm planning to do it was just with, uh, with a knife. I mean, that, that's the only way I can figure it out. Yeah, it's going pretty well. I just need to shave it off. Okay, that was pretty easy. Now let's check. Uh, let's check our fitment here. Yeah, it's in. And you want to make sure that the sensor actually snaps in correctly because. Uh, you don't want to lose your temp sensor while you're driving because that can lead to, to an overheat and you know how sensitive these engines are to overheating. So yeah, just shave off this little tab on your connector and this new sensor is going to plug right in. Alright, so uh, the, com the components in the cooling system have been replaced. Oh, once again, just a reminder got a new radiator, water pump, thermostat, thermostat housing, uh, all the hoses pretty much, the ones you can see and the ones that you can't see, 
you know, there's a couple of hoses under the Syntec manifold, uh, going back to the heater core. Uh, so everything's put together. I made sure that uh, that the plug, that the block uh, drain plug has been tightened, and same with the radiator uh, drain plug. Everything's sitting nice and tight. There's no movement in this radiator. I do want to point out one thing that uh, I believe has led to my um, uh, to the fail of my uh, original expansion tank. You know, as you know, it was leaking. I've noticed that this tab on the fan shroud uh, was actually broken off, so there was a lot of play in here, which caused a lot of movement of this uh, of this tank. So my solution was rather than you know replacing the shroud and risking the tab breaking again, I uh, I just drilled two small holes here, and I had you know like a long piece of ABS plastic left over from my. Uh, you know, from the baffle that I made and I just uh, attached it to the shroud and I used a cable tie to connect this. See how firm this holds? I, I think it's a lot better than the factory solution of this little plastic tab because I guarantee you that that would break off again. 